Hi guys, welcome to a brand new episode. Uh, I'm here with Roel today. Hey Roel, how are you? Hello, good morning. Excited to be with you. And today we, ex we are continuing our you know, series of episodes on troubleshooting common Wi-Fi issues. Uh, and we're going to take a look at MIST today and try to see you know, how easy it is to troubleshoot common Wi-Fi issues, looking at the MIST uh, dashboard and the tools that uh, you know, MIST is, is giving us. Um, so you know a lot, a lot to talk about uh, actually um uh, a lot to you know kind of test and and see how it goes uh, i have actually created a couple of issues in my uh, in my in my house here where i use mist so we can actually you know take a look at it take a look at the metrics and see how it is how easy it is to troubleshoot uh, you know the common issues um I guess we'll talk about the different issues as we go. We try to always uh, mimic or generate the same type of issues uh, so we can kind of compare the different uh, solutions that the vendors uh, offers uh, on the market today and to give you a glimpse on how everything works. Um, yeah, I, I would probably yeah. say that we don't, te we don't um, try to test like RF interference, right? Because, or, mm -hmm. or even capacity because we just don't have that many devices <laughs> so it's yeah it's it's pretty uh issues. yeah it's pretty simple issues right uh, you know password one password you know uh, radio server not working this type of thing uh we could go more complex like you said you know but uh, at the end of the day it's uh i think it's more relevant if it's just common issues that we see most of the time uh and try to see you know how easy it is for us to figure out exactly what's going on uh because sometimes and I, that's one thing I guess I wanted to tell you guys, you know, us working on these different projects or episodes, it's a nice way for us to also study the, um, the user experience. Like today I was doing some testing and I realized that whatever I was doing, the message I was getting on my device was a, a wrong password, right? Even if that's not really the problem I was generating, I was always getting the same error message from the device saying wrong password. So it's good for us also to know that, you know, what the device is, is giving us is, might not always be, you know, what's wrong on the, on the, on the network. Um, because sometimes we assume that, you know, if, if the device telling us it's a wrong password, it, it must be because it's a wrong password, but it's not yeah. necessarily always the case. <laughs> yeah, so I've it's seen nice. It's like nice. That before. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Yeah. The, the other thing to, that we didn't mention in the previous episode is that we're doing this uh, against the cloud dashboards, right? So some, depending on mm -hmm. when you see or hear this episode, because we are recording this in video as well for those listening to the podcast, is that some things may have changed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, just keep in mind uh, of when the, these recordings were published and they, uh, the, the vendor missed may have changed something. They may have updated and, and improved something. So this is just mm -hmm. kind of a point in time, what we see in the dashboard and, and how we use it, right. Or mainly how Francois uses it as he troubleshoots mm -hmm. uh, issues in his location. And that, that's one of the beauty of the cloud, right? They can update it every, every week, every couple of weeks. And uh, Mist actually has a nice page on the website where they detail uh, all of the new features uh, uh, every other week, I believe. And you can kind of know and follow up what's going on. So um, let's, let's go. Do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, jump yeah, into the dashboard. In. So uh, for you guys listening, I'm going to try to be very descriptive. Uh, if you want to uh, actually see what I'm doing, uh, then you can watch the uh, the YouTube video later on. Uh, what I'm showing right now is just the um, the main page of my dashboard. So when you log in, you're gonna go to the monitor and and a section called service uh, levels, and it's going to show you how your network is doing. So Mist is is giving us some metrics, and they're assessing how the Wi-Fi is is doing in my environment. So here, as you can see, I have deployed a couple of APs in my house. I called it Semfio Lab, uh, and uh, I'm 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 getting some data from the APs that I have deployed at home. Um, so, how many APs do you actually have deployed in in your house? I have two access points deployed in my house. One in my office where I am right now, and then one in my living room, which is located at the back of the house. Um, so that's, that's what I have. 
what I did to kind of generate more issues as well is I unplugged my second AP, the one I have in the living room. I unplugged it yesterday and I plugged it back today. Uh, so you guys might see some stuff related to that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that's my setup right now. And um, and yeah, what Mist does, I guess, is on the dashboard, on the monitor dashboard, they give us those different uh, values here and they call it SLEs, service level expectations. And what they're trying to do with the SLE is that they're trying to gather information from the APs uh, and then they kind of compute all of that data and they're trying to assess, you know, the user experience. They're trying to assess how the, uh, the you know, how the devices are doing on the Wi-Fi and, and how different things could impact the user experience in a, in a negative way. And if that's the case, they can show up that data to us so we can, we can know why, you know, the users could have a bad user experience. Yeah, and, and uh, I think it's important the, to note that it's for the whole site that you have selected. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the overall view of your your network for that site. Yeah, and I, I could even go back to the organization level. So one level above. So if I go to my entire org here, I can actually see all of these metrics, all of these SLEs for all of my sites. So right now, I don't have any other APs deployed on the other sites I have. So that's why you don't see anything. Uh, but if you have multiple sites with multiple APs, you could actually have that over, overview of you know uh, how the network is doing across all of your sites. And then if you see something that's not good, as you can see here, I have a throughput to at 21%. Um, you can go back, click on it, and then drill down to your site. If I click on my site, you'll, I'll go back to my site and I can kind of assess what's going on. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice way to have a view of what's going on uh, and what you can do. So I, uh, they have different SLEs, uh, so different metrics to, for, to categorize, I guess, uh, the user experience in different ways. Um, so they have one called successful connect, which will assess, you know, if people are able to connect or not. Uh, they have one that's called time to connect, which will assess how long it takes for, you know, a device to connect to the Wi-Fi and get online. Uh, they have something called coverage that will assess the coverage. Uh, there is something called roaming that, so, so that's a SLE that will assess the roaming, how fast the roaming are going and so on. Uh, they have a, a, a throughput called a SLE called throughput, and the throughput is uh, what they call a predictive SLE. So they're going to try to predict what type of throughput client devices will have, uh, and you kind of set a threshold. And if the uh, if the missed uh, cloud predict that the throughput will be below that threshold, then it's going to flag it as a bad throughput, I guess. Um, so this is this is giving you an idea of uh, throughput is nice because it's giving you an idea of how the devices are doing based on their capabilities as well on the network. Uh, and then you have one called capacity, which will assess the capacity of the network. So they'll try to assess things like you know channel utilization, how loaded it is. They'll try to assess if is if one client is you know consuming most of the. Uh, channel capacity and, and things like this. They'll assess outside non-Wi-Fi interferences and how that could impact the user experience. Uh, and then the last one they have is AP uptime. They're just tracking and uh, see if, AP, uh, if APs are going up and down and trying to uh, track all of this. Um, and all of this is, is, is like going on on an ongoing basis and you can kind of actually see it in the center here. I have a timeline and I can actually track and know when I had issues. And because all of the SLEs are presented, you know, in a kind of vertical way, I can actually um, try to do some correlation too. So if I see that I had issues here with my successful Connect SLE, I can try to see, okay, does that correlate with other SLEs? Maybe, you know, I had a, a problem somewhere else and I can, you can kind of do some quick correlations here, uh, visually speaking which is pretty nice. It also tracks it at the top here where it tells me where changes have been made. Uh, so it tells you whenever you make changes as a, as a user admin, and they tell you whenever the system is making changes, changes on your behalf. So you can kind of track all of this. Um, 
Yeah, so that that's kind of like the pres quick presentation of of the data we're getting, data we're seeing here. And like I said, you can actually change all of these SLEs. You can change some thresholds. So if I click on the settings here, if I go back to the throughput, for instance, you could set your throughput goal. So I have set mine to fifty megabits per second. And as you can see here, it's going to tell you, you know, when it's above that, when it's below that, and I could change it if I wanted to as well. Uh, if I needed to to, ch okay. to change that value. Yeah. So having all these customizable service levels is a good way to, well, one, you can get a baseline for, for what your network looks like now, and then mm -hmm. you, could, you could change the service level to, I guess, your your goal, where you, where mm -hmm. you want it to be, and then go from there, right? Yeah, uh, one very good example is coverage. So you would just set up the coverage, the goal of the coverage to whatever you've designed for usually, right? So if you've designed for like a minus 67, you could change that to minus 57, um, uh, 67, sorry, um, to, to kind of, you know, get a sense of how the devices are doing in your environment. And, and this is a nice way to try to see after the fact, if you have some coverage gaps, um, yeah, so that's yeah, that's it's it's a customizable. You can do it and then see how it goes, and it's going to help you to find out if you have if you have issues that might impact the user experience in a in a negative way. Um, and then in terms of troubleshooting, this data is very useful because they allow you to kind of drill down and they guide you in in where you need to look um, for you know for the root cause of your issues, right? So maybe maybe that's one thing we can do here. If I look at my successful connect metric, I can see that I have a rate of 90% success. So this means that I'm failing. Uh, so this means that you know 10% of the devices were not able to connect. Uh, and if I look on the right hand, you have what they call the classifiers here. Yeah, and you the might classifiers... have to zoom in a little bit on that. <laughs> the text is tiny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. There better. you go. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, awesome. So on the right hand, I have the classifiers, and the classifiers will tell me why I failed. So out of the you know ten percent of failures here, uh, why did I fail? And it's it's telling me why you failed uh, in ninety two percent because of authorization issues. You failed eight percent because of DNS issues, and so on. So it will kind of drill down why are you failing so when in the troubleshooting process you can kind of you know look into the the right direction uh even better than that if i click on my successful connect sle i'm going to get into another page that gives me a little bit more details as you can see and i can click on that classifier so i can click on that 92 percent of you know uh, uh authorization issues and here i'm going to get data you know from mist uh, telling me a little bit of uh, information about these failures. Yeah. Um, so, so you're going from a very high level overview mm -hmm. of what the issues are. And then as you click into it, it starts getting more detailed and getting down to the actual root cause. So I can, I really like the way that mist displays that data on the dashboard, mm -hmm. because as you come in, so I'm just trying to think of, um, from a network administrator's point of view, right? You you come into the mm -hmm. office and you want to see how your Wi-Fi is performing. You have a, a good look of things holistically, like, all right, how, how, how is everything working? And then you could dive mm -hmm. in. You, you see an issue. You go, wait, 90% yesterday that was, I don't know, 99%. What, what, what's the issue here? Maybe there's an update or a change that was done yesterday, and now it's starting to affect some of those devices. So I think it's a good way to drill into mm -hmm. issues uh, and be a little bit more proactive about it, right? Rather than waiting for tickets to arrive. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I wanted to add on top of what you were saying is you can do all of this uh, even if no one contacted you because they had issues. You can actually be proactive and say, you know, maybe dedicate five minutes in the morning and say, okay, what's, what could I make better on the environment? Um, and then you can, you know, drill down here and, and see how you could optimize different things. Um, and it, it helps you to kind of narrow down. So you start from a very high level, like you said, and then you narrow it, narrow it down to whatever could be the, the issue. And you can, uh, what something I didn't show there is for the SLEs, you can actually change, you know, the, uh, the, the time bracket, um, 
that you're assessing. So I could just look at my SLEs for today, for yesterday, for this week, and for like the last hour even. So you can kind of be granular about what type of data you're looking at. So which is which is nice. Um, so if I if I look at my authorization issues here, uh, you'll see different tabs. When you start going into you know drilling down into that data. Uh, and then there's one uh, tab that's called timeline. And here you can kind of, you know, go back in time and try to see when you had those authorization issues. And as you can see here, I had one authorization issue, you know, uh, right before 1 a.m. Uh, I had one at 3 a.m. I had one at five, uh, 6 a.m. And then I had a few at, uh, you know, at 8, 9 in the morning. So you can, you can kind of get an idea of when you had those uh, authorization issues. Um, uh, it it also gives you the the number of connected clients. So if you have like a a bigger issue and less clients connected, you can see a bigger drop. Uh, so you can see here I have like a drop of two client devices because I was playing with these uh, with my tablet and my phone at that time. Um, yeah, and then another tab I like is the one called affected items. So affected items will give you an idea of which devices are affected the most by these authorization issues. So you can kind of get a, an idea of the scope of it. Is it just for one devices? Uh, is it just because one user is entering the wrong password? Or is it you know, on all devices connected to one access point? Or is it on all devices on the site? So you, you can kind of have an idea of the scope of the issue that you're trying to assess. Uh, and and, so here and that's a common yeah. that's a common question whenever there's a big issue, right? Someone, probably a mm -hmm. manager somewhere, goes, "What's the impact of this issue? How many people are affected here? Like, what wh what's the problem, mm -hmm. right?" And so that makes people nervous whenever you know someone's breathing down your neck, and as you're trying to troubleshoot, they're asking you, "Well, what do you see? Is this pr impacting production? Should I send everyone home mm -hmm. because of this issue?" And so this kind of helps you drill down to those exact issues. Yeah, exactly. And then they have this uh, kind of, they have two scores that they give you here per device. So they, they give you the failure rate. So what's the percentage of times that they failed? Um, and then they give you overall impact, uh, right? So they kind of try to assess how bad it is. Uh, and they, yeah, they, they tell it to you right here. Um, one thing I want to outline here is what Mac randomization does for us sometimes. <laughs> As you can see, I have two devices named Mbappe, which is my phone. Uh, and you can see they have different Mac addresses, right? And that's because this guy here at the bottom is my real Mac address, which is the one I use to connect to my main SSID called Semfio. Uh, but then I did a test connecting to another SSID that I had that's called Semfio I IoT. And it's used a randomized MAC address when the device connected to that um, to that SSID to that other SSID. So that's why I have now two lines with two different MAC addresses, and that might be something you'll see out there as well uh, in the real world. As we we have more and more MAC uh, randomizations, you might see uh, you know devices appearing multiple times with different MAC addresses. Um, yeah, and then for the affected items, you can also drill it down per access points, per application, so you can have a, a better idea of, of what's going on. And then they have this uh, an anomaly tab as well to kind of give you a sense of the uh, of the failures. Um, and they have a distribution as well. So you get distribution, it helps you also to understand where is the problem happening? So on which SSID is it happening? Um, you know, which access point? Uh, which frequency band. So sometimes you can use that data to kind of correlate uh, the data and see see what the uh, the root code issue is. Um, yeah, it could be that you, you've done a mass rollout to all your Windows machines, right? A new certificate, and then now there's mm -hmm. this issue. You can, you can really see that if it, I mean, you don't have a lot of Windows devices, but you can see that issue mm -hmm. stand out right away if, if that was the case, right? if that certificate mm -hmm. did cause a problem. Yes, yes, you'll be able to see that. I guess the more devices, the the, the more it will stand out. Uh, but yes, you, you'll be able to see that. You'll be able to see if it's, 
you know, once the, the WLAN one, the SSID one is nice because it tells you on which SSID you're having issues, right? So you can, you can, you can know if you just see one SSID, you know that you have an issue with that. That might be, you know, how it's configured. That might be the authorization used for that SSID, but at least you know that the other SSIDs are not impacted and you can kind of <clears throat> um, have a better idea of where to look next. Uh, yeah, and so here what I would do is, you know, if I go back to the authorizations, I would actually go back to the affected items. So if I take uh, my phone, for instance, here, uh, and you can actually click on a client device. And once you click on a client device, it will, you know, MIST will give you some sort of summary, right? So it will give you like a text in English that you can read to kind of get a sense of what, you know, what's going on. So here, Miss is telling me that the client failed to connect 100% of the time, uh, primarily due to authorization problems. And then I have an, a second line that tells me that the problem is client specific with most client failures occurring on the AP called uh, Semfio AP03 yeah. access point and yeah, on the five gigahertz. gigahertz span. So what does that actually mean though? <laughs> so here, yeah, so here, well, I, got, I get a couple of informations. I know it's only on five gigahertz. I know it's only for that access point. Yeah. And I know it's most likely client specific. It is saying it's so, client specific. So something on that device yeah. is, is wrong, but we don't know quite yet yeah. what that is. Exactly. So if I want to drill down a little bit more, they actually have a nice link over here at the top that says view in, uh, insight. Mm, okay. um, yeah, and the insight page you know, helps us to drill down even more and uh, understand, you know, what type of issues we had with that client device. And it's going to give us a timeline of the different events that happened for that client device, right? So here I can see that I have a couple of bad events, right? And there's one called authorization failures and I have a couple of them. Okay, so I know that, you know, we had issues. And if I look at the details of that authorization failure, I can see that, you know, I have a, a description that's telling me that reason code number two, previous authentication no longer valid, uh, w WPA four-way handshake timeout. Okay. okay. So that's the information we get. So but still, what does okay? that mean, right? <laughs> yeah. Still, what does, what does it mean, that mean right? for for uh, for someone who who's not very, uh, you know, doesn't know all the very the details of Wi-Fi and is just a network mm -hmm. administrator or just some IT guy that got assigned to doing this? What does that actually mean for that person? And and how would he troubleshoot even further from here? Right? Reason code mm -hmm. two kind of sounds cryptic, right? Like, I feel like yeah. I have to Google what reason code two means and also four way handshake. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. It's still pretty technical if you have no idea what all of this means. Uh, oh, by the way, if you if you Google for way handshake, I think you end up on our podcast, which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, so if so, there's one thing that's pretty cool here. If you want to drill down even more, is that as you can see, I can download a packet capture, and this is one of the you know, one of my favorite features with MIST is that they can do dynamic packet captures. So whenever something wrong is happening, uh, they can actually, they do like an ongoing uh, packet capture on their radios. And so when something wrong is happening, they can actually go back to that buffer of frames and extract the relevant frames and then, uh, you know, package it into a PCAP and then upload it to the cloud, attach it to that event. So you can go back after the fact and look at the, look at the, the frames. Uh, which is pretty cool without having to reproduce the issue, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to tell the user, Hey, can you try again? And so I can try to mm -hmm. capture the frames. Like it's already there. Exactly. So that's, that's pretty cool. And here I can, I, I can either download it or I can, you know, open it directly in, in a cloud shark. So uh, let's try to do that. Ooh, um, fancy. <laughs> it's fancy. Yeah. Cl cloud shark is, but if you guys don't know, it's pretty much a uh, Wireshark in the cloud. Yeah. So it, it goes well with, uh, you know, mist because mist is in the cloud. So it, you can just move from one type to another and look <laughs> at the, the frames. Um, and here I can see that, you know, I'm going through the authentication properly. I'm going through the as association properly. And he, 
and <clears throat> here I'm saying that the forward handshake yeah, is I can see the problem. Yeah, is but not even completing. Then, yeah, so uh, yeah. if someone were to send this to like a network engineer, they'd be able to figure it out, or someone who knows how to read Wireshark and the four way handshake. Yes, so if you if you know a little bit about how Wi Fi works, you should understand that. I guess the you know the Wi Fi piece is working properly, but then you know something is going wrong with the four way handshake. Uh, so most likely related to the authorization. And if I go back to, I guess I can go back to, oh, no, not this one here. If I go back to MIST, uh, and if I look at the SSID I'm trying to connect to here, this, this SSID is configured to connect with a, a password, just WPA2, right? And so here we can see that the 4-1 check is failing. And this, this pretty much means that the, user is entering a wrong password wrong, wrong password yeah it wrong still password. requires some technical knowledge in order to to analyze this mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. can come to the conclusion that uh, the password is incorrect yes if you if you look at all the data we can actually uh, you know find uh, you know the, the problem there uh, uh, or we can have a very good assumptions I guess in terms of what happened. And that's that's what happened here. I was just entering uh, wrong password, and I tried a couple of times. And if if I'm sure if we look at the different packet captures here, it will look very similar from one another, and we'll see that the four way handshake is fail is failing. Yeah. So question for um, you, Francois, when you click on um, that button to analyze it in Cloud Shark, do you have mm -hmm. to have an account? Is it is it part of the subscription for Mist? Oh, um, does it just open it right away? Because uh, I can tell you're not logged in, so I'm guessing it's, yeah. it's included. Yeah, uh, I think Cloud Shark they have different tiers for their product, but I think there's uh, this part is free. Um, I, I, I I can't remember exactly the details about yeah. you know uh, what you can do with it, but no, I think this this should be free for for anyone just to, okay. the ability to open a PCAP. Um, I guess the question, yeah, I think the it's, next question is how long do they keep that data in there? Because I can see it's stored on Amazon AWS uh, S3 and um, that can't for be the mist, uh, inexpensive. Mean? Yeah. <laughs> so for mist, you can always go back seven days. Okay. So here so I can go back up to, to seven that. days. Yeah. And so we're still in the monitor section of, mm -hmm. of mist, right? So we haven't left this monitor section. You've just, all you've done is drilled yes. down further and further until you've gotten mm -hmm. into this client view which then has these events on the left side showing um eight total events there uh there's there's four bad events which it automatically captured a, a pcap and on the right side it has a description and a reason code which mm -hmm. we can it says four-way handshake so if you if you are knowledgeable with how wi-fi uh, authorization works, uh, then you can come to the conclusion that it's a, a, a P wrong PSK. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, here, if I uh, if I go back to my you know uh, authorization issues, uh, and I click on another client. So if I click on Zizu, which is my my tablet, uh, same thing. I'm gonna have a, a summary, and here it's interesting because. It's it's flagging different problems, and as you can see, you you'll find the different SLEs again in the summary. So in this case, they're telling me that this device is having problem with time to connect, throughput, coverage, and it's kind of giving me a as you know kind of same thing of a little explanation of what it is, and you know with Mist, I found that it's uh, it's worth. Uh, reading those descriptions usually, you know, as network guys, like we never read whatever dashboard is giving us. We tend to just look at numbers and all of that. Uh, but reading actually what uh, the dashboard is giving you is is more and more relevant because they in the back end they're using machine learning AI to kind of make it relevant, right? Yeah, um, it's be a good and, way to and, test how accurate that information yeah. is. And it's even more accurate if we start looking at Marvis, which we'll we'll look at Marvis after. Okay. Um, but with Marvis, it's, it's even more important to read what it's what Marvis is telling you because most of the time it will tell you what's wrong. So, so, so Mar for, nice. for those who don't know, Marvis is the AI portion 
of of mm-hmm. miss solution and it it makes it easier for you to troubleshoot but it is part of the premium um it's it's a it's an additional mm-hmm. license for the marvis por- portion right francois yeah it's an additional subscription um that you can get for for marvis yes uh they call it the network assistant okay that's pretty much what marvis yeah so is, yeah. so right now we're looking at what you get when you get kind of like that base subscription looking at Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. It's it's looking at the service levels. Uh, so we haven't dived into anything yet that requires an additional subscription. Yeah. So far, we're just looking at what you get with the basic subscription, which they call the Wi-Fi assurance. So all of these SLEs, you, you get it with the default uh, with, with MIST. Um, yeah. And so here, if I go back to my tablet and I and I actually look at the insight for that specific device. Here, you can actually see that it's, you know, you have the floor plan of my house and it kind of locate the device, which is pretty cool. And this is actually where it is. It's in my office right there. So uh, it's nice that it can actually locate where the devices are. And then same thing here, if I look at my timeline, I can see that I have some bad event and I can actually filter my bad events and try to see what happened here. Um, uh, so as you can see here, I had an issue connecting to the SEMVIO SSID. And then here I have another uh, description for it. And here it's telling me that the four-way handshake timed out, the station sends the authentication oh. message before authorization completed, 802.1x authentication failure. And it has different uh, numbers too. So this is a reason code 15. Your mm-hmm. auth fail is 23. So still got to try to figure out what those mean, right? If you're just kind of a, a, mm-hmm. a user who just needs to figure out what's happening. Um, and, and again, you still have the ability to download the packet capture, which is nice. Yes, I can still let's, uh, try to open it in... Um in uh cloud shark cloud shark you know what'd yeah. be really nice is if when you open it in cloud shark it just highlights the the actual frames to notice mm-hmm. right like to, mm-hmm. the the part where it does fail that'd be nice huh they could probably you know use the command field and do something with the with it yeah um yeah so here this, this one is weird. You can see that uh, the missed AP requested the identity to kind of start the .1x process, and then we got a deauthentication. Yeah, yeah the, basically uh, the, the device never sent it, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the device that's coming just from like, your missed AP. I don't want to connect, so I don't <laughs> really know what happened there. So the AP kicked you out. You're not going to say who you are while I'm kicking you out of here, so that's what it did. <laughs> Uh, if I look at the other ones here, I can see that I yet, have yet another reason one, code. Yeah. So here I'm looking at another failure that I had from my tablet, and it's telling me that you know the tablet got disassociated because um, the the sending station is leaving the BSS, right? So obviously yeah. you need to know your your Wi-Fi acronyms here if you want to understand what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but um, yeah, it's pretty much telling that uh, telling us that the the tablet, you know, is is disconnecting from the network, has been disconnected from the network, um, and then here it says that the station sends a disassociation message before authorization completed. Um, so here it's telling us that the tablet sent, you know, told the AP that he wanted to disconnect from the network before the authorization completed <laughs> and and here if we want to understand why would you do that it tell it is telling us that the uh, 802.1x authentication uh, failed uh, timed out this is interesting right timeout radio server failed to respond oh the radio the server failed to respond wow okay yeah even though the station was the one that left the radio server was the one that failed to respond and maybe because he was offended that the device was leaving <laughs> so yeah so here what what we can conclude from this is that the device tried to connect to a dot one x dot one x network uh but then the radio server never answered the request so the clients at one point they said okay you know what i never got an answer from the authentication server 
I'm timing out my authentication and I'm just disconnecting from that network because I'm, I'm, I'm going nowhere. Yeah. Um, so it, it's giving like? us an indication. Yeah. In the packets you want to see? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. In the, in the, in the, and this is when it's, we talked about that when we talked about Mariah last week, but it, this is when it's important to understand, <clears throat> you know, how the, uh, dot one X is working. How yeah, the dot one X frame exchange works? Is, yeah, you you have to know your frame exchanges. So we're probably talking about CWAP and CWSP type mm -hmm. of um, information here when we're looking at this. Yeah, exactly. And we, here we can see that you know the the uh, dot one X, the eight hundred two dot eleven authentication worked properly. The association process worked properly. And then we can see that we uh, the AP is asking for the identity. Yep. Uh, we can see that we get a response from the client that gives its name. Uh, and then if we if we pass this multicast stuff, we can see that you know the process is starting, um, and and it keeps on starting, keeps on yep. starting. And we never get we here we should get an answer from the register server. server. We never yeah. get. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then what you actually after the identity request, what we're supposed to see is like the negotiation on which if method will be yeah. used for the authentication from, from the authentication server, right? Yeah, from the authentication server, and then the clients, you know, they they agree or not, and they they make sure that you know they both speak the same language, uh, but we don't see that process here. So okay. this so, is telling us that. Yeah, the radius is not answering. Yeah, so it was the other way around. The device was waiting, and and mm -hmm. the server just left it hanging. And so that's when your mm -hmm. device said, "You know, forget you. I'm I'm out of here." <laughs> yeah, and you you can see here. There's a disassociate uh, frame that that the dashboard was actually referring to, right? That the client left. That's what it that's what it meant. The client mm -hmm. left, and so the radius um, authentication portion uh, timed out. And and it's cool because here you can see the seconds, right? So you can see that it sends three requests every five seconds. And then 20 seconds after it says, okay, you know what? Screw you. I'm going away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that's really nice detail down at the like packet capture level, mm -hmm. like really good stuff, right? This is the, uh, where, where network engineers say, you know, give me the, um, what is it? Mm -hmm. They they say give me the packet. Packet capture. never lies. Yeah, packet never lies. Packet capture or <laughs> lying, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it still needs re requires further analysis, right? Because I think that description mm -hmm. and the reason codes are still a little uh, m maybe unknown to someone who doesn't see this, look at this day to day, right? They may not mm -hmm. know this from a CWSP level or AP level, CWAP mm -hmm. level, and then uh, not knowing where exactly. Uh, I think it should just say straight up, like, this is a radius server issue. Yeah. I think it has a little bit yeah. too much information. It, they probably could have yeah. gotten rid of client disassociated. The reason why the client disassociated was because a radius server didn't even respond. So mm -hmm. I, I would just say this is a radius server problem. Yeah, maybe they should put that at the top, right? <laughs> the, the, the thing they put at the bottom, you know, yeah. timeout, radius server failed to response. Maybe they should put that at the yeah. top because, yeah. yeah. Because someone um, might misinterpret that and go, well, you, you left the AP. You, you were probably walking away from it. So that's why it didn't mm -hmm. complete. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, you still got to fully read. Like, I mean, that's, an, I'm just saying yeah, some you people still might have not fully read. read the message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that, and, and what happened there is that I modified the configuration of the radio server. So it wouldn't reply to, <laughs> to the AP. So that's what happened what? on my end. It's, not, it's <gasps> truly not a Wi-Fi issue. That's a someone messed up the radius server. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that never happens, right? Um, and, and and if I look at my other errors, you'll see that they look pretty similar. Okay, no, wait a second. This one doesn't look the same. This one is telling me that the eight hundred two one X authentication failed, but yeah. I don't have the re the timeout. It doesn't say radius, yeah. That. But if you analyze the packet capture, does it actually show you that? Uh -huh. dun, 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 Let's dun. see. We're live troubleshooting. Let's figure this out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here, Whoa. this is interesting. Yeah, you get yeah it. it looks like we have more data. Yeah. There's actually a response from the authentication server here. 
Yes. So we actually can see the editor.11 authentication. Everything is good. The association process is good. Then, you know, the AP is, is requesting the identity from the my tablet. My tablet is responding with its name. Uh, and then up we get, you know, the negotiation for which IP methods will be used. So my tablet is telling, you know, the 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 radio server, okay, what well, you know, I want to use IP PIP. And then after that, they start actually the creation of that, uh, you know, for, for PIP, you need a TLS tunnel. So they actually start the creation of that TLS tunnel. You can see the client halo, client server. So, you know, if you if you know a little bit of, uh, you know, how this works, you, you should know at this point that, like you said, well, the, the, there is communication between the client and the radio server. Yeah. Right. So if there is communication between the client and the radio server, it means that the radio server you know, uh, the, the communication between the AP and the radio server is working and configured properly. So you can kind of take that out of the equation when you're troubleshooting. Um, and then, to, yeah, you can see that they're, you know, they're, they're able to create their certificate. And then at one point, you're going to see those application data because it's, yeah. it's actually encrypted data. It's all the exchange that goes within that, within you know, that, TLS uh, tunnel. Encapsulation, yeah. Yeah. And you can see a couple of exchanges and all of oh, a sudden you see a, a, a failure. failure. Yeah. an EEP. So it's yeah. under, an, it's under EEP and it's a failure, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we talked about that with Maraki too, right? So that, um, that so it has a code there. It says failure four. Does that map back to the actual message from the dashboard as error four? No, 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 no this eight. one is eight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it picked the last one, the disassociate, disassociate <clears throat> message. Let me go back. Um, yeah, it's it's picking uh, it from the last frame. It says recent yeah, code eight. Yeah. So if you go back, there's your last frame in that capture is disassociate. And oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's um, using that. Um, that yeah, recent eight. code. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can see how they map these things back, right? So it is grabbing mm -hmm. those recent codes from the frame. Um, I'm not sure if you necessarily have to display that to the user saying that it's a recent code eight, but yeah. mm -hmm. it's useful well, if data. If you want, you can go back to the standards and see what yeah. it means. Or maybe <laughs> you're that good. You got those recent codes memorized, <laughs> you know. All right, so the, but you know what? You know, I, I guarantee you, tell Peter you. McKenzie knows this. He'll see, he'll see <laughs> the recent codes and he knows exactly what the issue is. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. Um, yeah, so here, so what we can take away from this is that we know that the, uh, you know, we were actually able to communicate with the, communicate with the radio server. We were able to establish that, uh, you know, that PIP tunnel or TLS tunnel between, you know, the clients and the server. And we know that within that tunnel, something failed. Um, it's because you disassociate. No, <laughs> it, it, might, it may not, this, right? You, you would, you can... You, you might think it's because a client disassociated, but it's disassociating because of the failure that occurs mm -hmm. in that encapsulated um, data there. Yeah, so actually here, if you want to know what's going on inside the tunnel, you need to know how you configure the, the PEEP on the devices. Uh, and on my devices, what I've used is the PEEP with the ms v 2 uh, authentication. So I know that, you know, the, the client devices or the users will authenticate using um, credentials, uh, username and password. Uh, so once you know, you know, which IP method is used within the PIP tunnel, you can kind of uh, have a better idea of what's going on inside the tunnel and why the, you can narrow it down to which, you know, the, the reason why it would fail. And in our case, you know, if we're using a username password, you know, the reason why it would fail is because you're using the wrong username or using the wrong password, or it could also be because that username and password is not authorized on the radio server to connect to the Wi-Fi, right? So you can kind of narrow it down to, you know... But wouldn't a, a, we get uh, a message from the radio server that says raw, uh, so on the user radio server is not authenticated? On the radio server, yes, you get that, but you in, in the MIS dashboards, you don't have access to the log from the radio server. You know, got it. Okay. So if if you can build if you can build a system that can uh, grab data from the from from MIST and from uh, the radio server, you could correlate the two. 
Yeah, I'm trying to remember from our last episode if Meraki was able to grab that or or at least give you a reason that said I remember it gave like a dot one X issue, but I'll have to look back at mm-hmm. it. Uh, I don't think they're able to 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 do that because everything is encrypted, right? So if you don't have access to the log from the radio server, you're kind of blind in, in terms of what's yeah. going on. Yeah, my my guess is if the radio server is not telling, is not saying, is not responding with, mm-hmm. "Hey, credentials are wrong," then yeah, the dashboard wouldn't know. What uh, what Meraki had is they had like a list of you know potential issues, mm, you okay. know. So yeah, that that could be something that could be like here with all the data we have, we can kind of narrow it down the potential issues. Yeah. Uh, be like, but, the, you know, we gotta go talk to the radio server guy, figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like uh, what you get with the SLEs and how, you know, I guess how, how detailed you, you can go to kind of find or help find the root code and analysis like like we like we saw it's not exactly going to give you the root code analysis um every time but it's yeah. good it's it gets going you to there, help you right? yeah it gets you there helps you uh, go in the in the right in the right direction I yes yeah, because you can see if it's an issue for everyone right you would really see if you've got a, a mm-hmm. major issue but if it's an individual user then you can drill it down further to see what exactly is the issue for that person and then get a packet capture for the bad event that is captured that's if if the dashboard was to catch that bad event it will display mm-hmm. that packet capture for you mm-hmm. yeah that's the packet capture stuff is is awesome <laughs> it, it just makes it so it, it, like easier like if you guys have done packet capture to do troubleshooting in the field you know it can be quite challenging uh the fact that you have the the, the packets available to you after the fact is actually amazing yeah this is uh, one step better than meraki because i know working with meraki support and you know this is not i'm not saying this is bad on on them but i know with meraki support when you do open a ticket they will ask you to do a packet capture right so you have to go and recreate that event but mm-hmm. here in the miss dashboard you, you're not having to do that it's already there so you have the data uh, you can go back yesterday or a day before or up to seven days and still have this data available, right? Because most of the issues will come after the fact where the user says, hey, yesterday I was in this um, room, I was trying to present, but I couldn't connect to Wi-Fi. Why? Mm-hmm. And so like, yeah. usually you have to go, well, let's go back over there, recreate the issue. Well, we don't have to do that here. And then I guess we didn't uh, show the entire inside page here, but if I... If I select, uh, so here I selected my tablet for the last week, I can see, you know, whatever I've done on it. Um, uh, and then you can see the connections, DHCP latency, and you can see the evolution of the RSSI. Right? So here you can see that sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's really bad. And up, oh, it becomes really good again. You know, up, oh, it's good for, the, for that duration. And then up, oh, it's really bad. Yeah, uh, so, really so you good. can probably really get bad. information on, hey, when around what time did you have this issue? And if they say, hey, it was between, I don't know, 6 and 7 a.m., you can, mm-hmm. or 5 and 6 a.m., you can say, oh, you know, your RSSI was like horrible. Maybe that's mm-hmm. why it wasn't connecting. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, as you can see, as you move your cursor on these timelines, it actually moves it on all Everything. of the diagrams yeah. that you have. I, I really love that feature because as you try to look at every single graph, I don't want to move my mouse to every single graph to see the time. Like I like that they move all the timelines. Mm-hmm. And then here, just to give you background information, the reason why it's low, it's because I probably, I prob- I probably bring the tablet in the bedroom with me. And then if it's high, it's because I leave it in my office. Yeah, that's probably the reason why. Um, and and they have this graph as well where they show you roaming. So they show you when you roam between different access points, which is what are those cool different well. colors in that roaming uh, bar right there? So it's the level of RSSI you have. Okay, so you can tell if yeah, it's a so. bad roam with a bad RSSI. Or is it because mm-hmm. it's, you're seeing it over time as you're roaming, your RSI, RSSI gets worse, and then you roam to another. But you're, you didn't roam to another AP. You stayed on that same AP is what it looks like, right? Or Yes. Oh, no, I yes, see. You, because, you got check marks there. So, yeah, here I roamed. Uh, 
Yeah, I when got you get confused a check mark, with the graph. Because I, I thought that bar yeah. was just for AP03. Um, but I can tell yes, when you hover is. over. But it's saying yeah. that you're going from AP4 to AP03. It was for a very limited time. Also, oh, because I see. We're looking at one week it. of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so couldn't see I the small green dots there. <laughs> so if, if I do it for, you know, if I do it for uh, the uh, today, uh, maybe not today, let's do last 24 hours. Um, let's see if we have, no, we don't have it. So let's do. Yeah, bad example. <laughs> yesterday, maybe. Yeah. I want to try to see if I have some. No, I, I didn't roll yesterday. Maybe your phone. But yeah, if you have on a. Tablet? That's my yeah. My phone will have way more roaming. Yeah, so you probably uh, you tease your phone there. So you're you're going to client. So you you it has it drilled down to the client and the time frame. Now you're changing mm -hmm. the client from the tablet to your phone. Hopefully, yes. so that we can change see the roaming. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's a lot. That's what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So here you can see I had a pretty low signal, and then Buffy decided to move to roam to that AP. Okay. And then here, you roam to that AP. So whenever they give you X mark, is because you're roaming to a lower signal, I guess. Oh, you see okay. here, I roam from mi minus 66 to minus 70. Oh, yeah, I see that. For some okay. reason. Yeah, and it highlights yeah. it, which is nice, because it says, hey, look, you just roam to this AP with worse signal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see, uh, you know, what happened here if I scroll down you'll see yeah here i roamed i room back to that ap and so on so you can you can kind of see what's going on um which is which that, is that nice is and nice you can, like you said yeah yeah nice view uh and you can you can get that information on the map as well with marvis you want to talk about marvis yeah let's talk about marvis because what we've looked at so far is what's included in your when you get a subscription with the missed APs, Marvis is a uh, is an additional subscription, but it really helps you troubleshoot things much faster. It it it's a little bit more descriptive too of what the issue is, and that's mm -hmm. just kind of the benefit of using Marvis as you uh, speak with mm -hmm. it because it's an AI, uh, what do you call it? AI network assistant and helping you troubleshoot, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's the goal of it. Marvis is your assistant to figure out what's going on if you have an existing problem, or it can also help you to proactively find issues on the network and then help you out to, to solve them before it impacts the user experience. And Marvis is, is like, uh, I guess in the back end, it's a more complex AI engine. Uh, but for us, for the users, we have three ways uh, to, I guess, uh, interact with Marvis. Uh, the first one is the actions, what they call the action, the Marvis actions. And this is just Marvis telling us that we need to take actions right away on a couple of things that are impacting, you know, the users. So whenever you see a Marvis action, it's because, you know, the AI engine is, is pretty much sure that this is, or this will generate, you know, a bad user experience, network issues, Wi-Fi issues. So it's letting us know what's going on and it's, it's asking us to take action. That's why it's called Marvis actions. Um, so, uh, this is a nice dashboard to look at if you just, you know, you know, if you're just going into the office in the morning and trying to understand is everything working properly, you can go to this Marvis action and understand what's going on. And um, they they are act actually classify the actions in, in different categories. And here you can see that I have one uh, action that I need to take care of for my APs and one for my switch. Uh, and if I if I click on it, if I click on my AP action, uh, I actually have different type of actions for APs. And uh, I can see that I have one offline uh, event here, and it's telling me that that AP called AP on the stick, uh, same file AP is offline. That's actually the AP I have behind me. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, but I have an AP behind me on the stick connected to nothing um, that I use sometimes. Uh, to do API on the stick site survey that I use sometimes when I teach to showcase different things. And this AP is not connected, so it's offline. So this is, I guess this is not a big issue for me. I left it there so I could show it to you, but if you you could have legit APs going down offline and here Marvis will let you know. Um, if I click on the 
you know, on the actual event or AP, I can get more data and it's telling me exactly where that AP is, is, is connected or was connected the last time. So, oh, you nice. know, if you have like, I don't know, yeah, if you have a thousand APs and then yeah. one AP is down, <laughs> you can go back and, and see where, it, where it's connected. So you can actually send someone on site, uh, right. yeah. you know, you to can take tell a look exactly at exactly which switch, which port. Um, you could see mm -hmm. if it's maybe a particular switch, maybe that would probably show under a switch action that the switch went down, mm -hmm. but you can see the impact of it pretty easily. Yeah, which is nice. And then for the switch, uh, you can see that I have a bad cable event. And so here, same thing. It's telling me exactly uh -huh. which port. Yeah, we were talking about this before we recorded and this wasn't intentional. <laughs> you were just saying you found this issue yeah. through Marvis. <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't intentional. So what happened is I kind of reorganized my switch and, and the APs I had connected to that switch, that Juniper switch, um, a couple of weeks back. And I, I had a Cisco APs that, uh, that uh, yeah, Cisco 9117. Uh, and then for some reason, I changed which cable that AP was connected to. Uh, and then I noticed that the AP wouldn't boot. It would just like cycle through uh, and never boot properly, never connect to the controller I have. Uh, so I was like wondering what's going on. And then yesterday I actually changed the, the keyboard, I reorganized it and I connected the AP to another keyboard. Uh, and then all of a sudden it worked, the AP worked properly. So I was like, okay, so maybe something is wrong with that cable. And then uh, this morning when I went to the Marvis Action to kind of prepare for this episode, I noticed the bad cable and that was the exact cable that you know, I used to connect that uh, Cisco uh, Cisco AP. So, you know, I, I should have looked at Marvis because he would have told yeah. me what was wrong with my AP. And, and you uh, could actually so a test cable. a cable from here, right? So you, you could actually mm -hmm. test, do a cable test. But I'm not, I've never tried that before, so I'm not sure what it actually does. Maybe it'll tell you what pins are are um, yes. bad. Yeah. So for the cable test, it actually leverages the uh, the Juniper. A cable test feature. Um, so I guess I can show you if I go to the switch to my switches. So right now I'm going to my switches. I'm going to the Juniper switch I have uh, in the dashboard and they have a utility uh, link where you can actually open a set of tools that you can run on the switch and they have something called cable test and you can just uh, do a cable test on the port. Um, yeah, so it's, it's basically running the command for you when you press that button cable test for that port. Yeah, exactly. So, and then if something is wrong, it will tell you. Yeah. I, so here I just run it against interface uh, three yeah. and then it's telling me, you know, test executed. And then here it's giving me the results. So it's telling me, yeah. you know, that the test passed, the status is up, the pairs, it gives you the details on all of the pairs and, and it, tell it, you. And it passed because you replaced the cable, right? Yes, the the faulty cable. I have it in my hand right now, so I should do a test with this guy, and see what's up. Um, see where where it's failing. That's cool. All right, so mm -hmm. let's go back to Marvis then, because we're almost at the top of the hour for the recording. Yes. Okay. So Marvis actions. It's you know what needs to be done right now. Uh, they missed is doing is being very careful about not showing you false positives here. So if you see something here, it means something is wrong. For sure, uh, and then you can actually interact with Marvis, ask Marvin question, Mar Mar Marvis some questions, and you can do it in both in two different ways: natural language, which is just you know normally talking to Marvis at the bottom, it shows you examples, so you can locate a client. Uh, so if I want to locate my laptop, for instance, I can do that, and it's going to show me on the map where my client is. Um, if I can do, let me try another one tablet yeah for some reason it's not loading my map but it's uh yeah it's showing me where those devices are and so you can interact with marvis that way ask some questions uh obviously it doesn't it's not google it's not going to answer all of your questions <laughs> that's why miss also have a legal help <laughs> guide yeah. to tell you how to talk to marvis if i ask marvis uh, which uh, coffee uh is the best oh okay let's uh, see Oh, it doesn't know because he doesn't drink coffee. <laughs> yeah, it, I guess it doesn't drink coffee. <laughs> It'd be interesting if to know I if there you, are some Easter eggs, though. Like if you ask a very specific question, does it? That'd <laughs> be awesome. 
what is AI? It's searching. Oh, it's actually, oh that's it's how it searching. pulls up articles. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here, like, okay. Marcus is really good if a, a user has given you, you, you got a hold of a MAC address, and you need to look at what's going on with this specific client. You could do that, right? Or even search the client name. So that's something you could do there, mm -hmm. like how you were looking at your tablet. There you go. Yeah. So you're doing troubleshoot. Uh, how do you say that? Z Zizu? Zizu. Zizu. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and it's giving you, I guess, the top three issues that it's seeing, the three service level problems that are affecting this specific device, right? And then it's also got some images at the top there. So like where which one mm -hmm. is the most important for failing? It says association or auth authentication, DHCP, DNS. AP mm -hmm. is good, has nothing there. Uh, and then RF as well. And then down below mm -hmm. are the top three issues, which you could then click investigate to go into those specific issues. But there is a description for each of those. Yes, the the description is, is, really, is really nice. So here for the coverage, for instance, it's telling us that the client uh, has poor wireless coverage 62% of the time. Uh, due to weak signal strength, right? And then it's telling us it's per, it's uh, probably client specific uh, uh, and occurring on the five gigahertz when we're connecting to the same FiOS society. So you can you can kind of have an idea. Then if you go back to, you know, if you click on investigate, you can actually drill down in different things, different uh, 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 different uh, boxes here, and you can understand, you know, the classifiers. So going back to the SLE coverage. You know why do we have coverage issues and here's the, <clears throat> it's telling you it's because of weak signal and it's telling me when i had a weak signal uh so i can if this is by default it's doing it today so you can see that you know between i guess midnight and uh 6 50 the tablet was pretty much in my bedroom uh, and then when i woke up i took the tablet downstairs and i connected to the ap uh well it got a better signal because i was uh, I was closer to the AP, uh, and you can kind of see that. Um, yeah, so that's that's one way to interact with Marvis, and the the other way is the query language. The query language is more like using uh, keywords uh, that you you can you know Marvis is giving you, so you can actually troubleshoot or have an idea of what uh, you know how devices are doing. Uh, so so if I want to understand the roaming, I can do roaming off. And then I can go and get, if I get my phone, for instance, uh, here it's going to show me <clears throat> roaming, information about roaming for that, for my phone, right? And then I can also look at the floor plan. So here I can see, you know, which API I roam to. And as you navigate from the events, you can see, oh, you know, that's a nice little you can kind of. Yeah, showing the arrows yeah. of how, where, which AP it's going to. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is pretty nice. And you, you can imagine if you have an environment with, you know, tens of APs, hundred of APs, you have a better idea of, you know, where people go and, and where you have roaming issues uh, if you need to um, to improve something. And they also have a table view here where you can, can you know, show you what happened and 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 uh, if you have issues or not. So the, that's, that's nice. Um, Actually, yeah, showing, if showing were, this method is much mm -hmm. faster for troubleshooting than how you did it through the service levels. Because here you just went directly to a client and it's mm -hmm. it, it just displays all the problems right there. Whereas in the beginning on the main dashboard, you were going, you had to pick, you had to look at the service levels, pick the one that had the issue, drill it down, look at affected items, which are all the devices that were affected, pick one, mm -hmm. right? You may or may not see the client you're trying to, f you're, you're troubleshooting. So here with Marvis, you can just go directly to the client. You can go directly to the site. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to look at top three issues for everything. Like you can do it that way so, too, right? Yeah, there's something that's uh, even better than that. Uh, what you can do, you can ask Marvis about the unhappy clients. All right. Yeah, and, and so here, your list. yeah, you get the list so I can see. Oh, you got to make my wife happy, startup. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so yeah, if if I look, for instance, at my that's my wife's laptop. Um, She's the most unhappy client. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so here, you know, more than ever, 
this is where the text really makes sense. So here it's telling us that we have a successful connect issue. The client failed to connect 100% of the time due to authentication failures with the radio server. It gives me the IP address oh, of the radio server. Yeah. Right. yeah. On the sm WLAN and five gigahertz band because of 802.1x authentication failures. Yeah. And then it's, tell, it's telling me the problem is client specific. Uh, most failures occurs, uh, occurs on the the Air, which is the, her laptop. She has a MyBook Air. And then it's telling me the client is currently offline. Yeah. I actually have her laptop right here. Oh, um, so and you're, you're troubleshooting it. <laughs> no, I, I know exactly what's going on. Uh, because but right there, it's me. so, yeah, it's very clear because in the service levels, as we were drilling into the client, we were looking mm -hmm. at reason code numbers. We had to look at packet captures and then, and then go, oh, okay, it's probably a username or a password issue. But using mm -hmm. Marvis, and you all you did was troubleshoot client and then the host name, now it's yep. telling you the exact issue. It's saying it there is an issue with this device on this radio server, and by the way, here's the IP address, but it is because of an authentication failure on the device. Mm -hmm. And what I can do as well here is I can drill down and go back to the events. So if I still want to go and get the packet capture, I can also get it from here, right? And then I can oh, get the exact same. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can open the, the packet capture and try to understand if, if I want to know exactly what type of authentication issue do I have, you know, I can, I can go back and, uh, and, and see what's going on. Um, um, yeah. So here I can, you know, I can uh, you know, take a look at the packets. I can see I have the authentication association request identity. Um, and then I can see that the TLS tunnel is, you know, starting to get built uh, between the client and the server. Uh, but then here you can see that we got a couple of servers hello from, you know, from the server and that's it. Then the, the client, it looks like the clients never answer to that. And so what I'm suspecting here is that, you know, my wife never actually accepted the certificate on her laptop from the Regis yeah. server. And so the laptop, you know, never, never connects on its own. Yeah. Um, so looking at the packets here, I can have a clear view of, of what's going on. And so I'm sure that if I go back to my uh, wife laptop right now and try to connect, I'm going to see the certificate from the radio server and I'm going to yeah. have to say trust. Okay. Yeah, see, that's so why that's it's good to understand kind of the sequence of events that occurs, frame exchanges, what happens on the actual device, right? Because if you, if you mm -hmm. take a CWNP certification, part of the objective is understanding what happens at the client side, right? Looking at a Windows or a MacBook or a mobile device, what do you what do you mm -hmm. see when you try to join these SSIDs dot, using dot one X? Uh, there's a certificate you have to uh, trust. So the, all of those different sequences are are really good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to help you. You know, uh, understand how it works. It is definitely it's going to help you in the in, in what you do. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. 100%. So I would say then for Marvis, right? If someone were thinking about um, if if the 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 having Marvis and paying for Marvis and all the other extra features that comes with it on that subscription, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. I would say you know if you're not a Wi-Fi expert and you just need to figure out problems quickly, get to that root cause quickly, and get everyone up mm -hmm. and running, then I would say yes, uh, it, it is worth getting that subscription. And that way you just squash these issues right away quickly and, and get mm -hmm. them back, get users back up and running again. Yeah. I think if you have, uh, you know, a critical environment and most people have, you know, rely on Wi-Fi for critical activity nowadays, the Marvis action is really good. I still need for customers where, you know, they know right away what needs to be done to fix issues. And sometimes it's issues you don't, you don't even know about like, kind of like my bad cable. Um, so sometimes you can, you know, be proactive about that. But so, most of the time it's like, you know, AP down, APs that are down. And if you didn't have that, you, would, you wouldn't have known. Uh, and then, you know, client device, um, uh, the users won't necessarily always complain about that sometimes, you know. Uh, but here you can see it right away and you can fix the issue right away. Um, the, the, the other 
really nice piece that Marvis is giving us is <clears throat> the all the details here, you know, on what's going on. So the text is usually, you know, very important here. As you can see, it's giving us uh, good information, um, and and also you get access to the client insights. So remember when we were looking at the insights uh, yeah. from the you know the for the clients the different events. So the insights, and then you can you can uh, select the client that you're in interested in. So you can get access to that also with the. Um, uh, Is that part of the, uh, Marvis as well? That insights tab. For the just for the clients, you get the insights for the site access point and all of that. But for the clients, I believe it's uh, it's part of the the Marvis subscription. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Raspberry Pi is not doing anything here. <laughs> trying, uh, to find, trying to find yeah. a device. That Francois is not doing anything. Yeah, you're not, right. you're, you're not okay. working at all. There, there it is. <laughs> the other MAC address. <laughs> the other MAC address, yeah. So, yeah, so all of this uh, is is also, uh, and you can get quite quite a, nice data the roaming the location it's not the location is actually is pretty nice for us because when we do remote troubleshooting it's always nice to know where the people are you know yeah. so you can locate uh devices and that's that's pretty cool yeah and you, you do that's have to cool. upload the floor plan and place mm -hmm. access points and some of that can be automated if you're using echo how you could you could upload the echo how file and it'll um, mm -hmm. place the access points for you as well yeah, it will place uh, the access points. Uh, oh, it will. Some of you guys um, are outside. Yeah, you that's have a lot uh, of people because, uh, in your office, Francois. <laughs> you think I'm uh, over the the capacity for COVID? <laughs> yeah. So what what happened is I have a few IoT devices in my office. You know, like uh, smart plugs and yeah. smart lights and all of this. Uh, plus, you know, my devices. So yeah, that's, that's what you see right there. And yeah. they're all connected to my AP. Um, yeah, you can right, also well, see Bluetooth stuff. All right. Well, I think that was a good, a really in-depth overview of troubleshooting issues with Mist using the service levels and also diving into Marvis, the, uh, the additional subscription that actually goes into a lot of great detail of those client issues getting down to the exact reason why uh, an issue occurred. Um, so that's something that, that is uh, an advantage mm -hmm. over just your standard subscription with the service levels. So I think that's important to note as well is what you get with Marvis. So some of the service levels without Marvis, you do have to uh, analyze that message a little bit more, maybe look at the packet mm -hmm. captures to really understand what's going on. But I think for for someone who doesn't do this uh, day to day, right? If they, they're not familiar with Wi-Fi and the frame exchanges, then Marvis would probably be a lot more useful for them in order to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. So uh, let us know what you guys think about Mist and troubleshooting. Do you guys find that that level of detail and, and insights and analysis is actually really useful for you? Is there something that you wish that could be there that isn't there today. Uh, I'm sure there's there's a lot of things that could be added. Mist certainly does work on updating it as much as possible. I know they listen to mm -hmm. feedback from other people. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Francois? Yeah, as I like that everything is on the same dashboard, right? I like the fact that you don't have to go different places. Um, and then you, you, they have integrated a, a lot of things in it, Marvis. Uh, what I'm showing right now is a location, which is another tool that I use sometimes to correlate information. So they, they would kind of create a heat map of you know the signal strengths of your client devices. So you can kind of see where you would have potential coverage issues. And then you could correlate that with the coverage SLE and try to see, you know, I see uh, I have some problems from some client devices and you can try to see where they're located. And if they are located in 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 the area that's, uh, you know, with a weaker signal, you can just, uh, you know, correlate the two set of information and say, maybe maybe I need to add an AP um, here and improve the, the coverage in this area. So it's a nice, it's a nice um, tool as well. And everything is in the same dashboard, like I said. So it's it's nice and 
easy, I guess. Very cool. All right. Sure was a lot of data to present. Yes. Maybe a little too much, but it's okay. <laughs> we can do follow up <laughs> follow up episodes, I'm sure. If you guys have specific questions, uh we could we could do that as well. Yeah, maybe uh, we can also push it to a live stream where we can try to mm -hmm. do some use cases and try to generate issues live uh, and see how the a dashboard actually responds to that. Some of the, the issues that we were showing were, were fairly common, right? So there are other issues mm -hmm. that people run into that might not be as easy to catch. So what does that look like? in a dashboard and we don't, we, we don't typically, we're not diving into those types of issues because we're trying to compare uh, different solutions, different vendors and their oh. dashboards and how they react to those common types of issues just to have a, mm -hmm. a, a good comparison between each one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and right. if you, if you uh, just like, you know, the, the last time, if you guys use miss differently to troubleshoot issues, just feel free to share that. Uh, you know, in, in with us in the comments, uh, you know, each each engineer has its own way to do it. So it's nice to share that as well. And, um, you know, so we can all benefit from it. All right. With that said, I need to refill on my coffee. I finished it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you guys have any comments, <laughs> uh, let us know in the show notes. Go to cleardescend.net slash 261. I believe that's the episode. Um, and then we will see you on the next one. Let us know what vendor you want us to, to look at. We have some more equipment and we'll try to put those up and, and run them so we can also uh, compare a lot more. Mm -hmm. So we hope you find the series useful and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye, guys. See you guys.